Hello everyone. My name is Akash Nag. I study in class six, and I am a student of Garden High School. Today, I am going to demonstrate on a centrifuge experiment, which is a part of our of our science exhibition. A centrifuge is a laboratory device that is used for the separation of fluids, gases, liquids based on their densities. Separation can be achieved by spinning a vessel at a high speed, which contains the materials which we are going to separate. The centrifugal force pushes the heavier particles at the bottom and keeps the lighter particles at the top. This process is called a centrifugation. As you can see, I made a basic model of centrifugation of, of, of a centrifuge in my home. Now I am going to demonstrate. The, I have used cardboard, a card, circular cardboard disc. As you can see, these threads help this cardboard disc to move around, to rotate around, to produce centrifugal force. Now let's see how it rotates. As you can see, it is rotating and producing the centrifugal force. I am going to show it again. As you can see, it is moving. As a part of our experiment, now I will show the process of sedimentation by using a centrifuge. As you can see, I have made a solution of colored chalk powder and and water in a glass tube. In the opposite side, I have also kept a similar tube. This tube will work as a <coughs> counterweight. Otherwise, the disc will not rotate properly. Now, I will show you how this works. Now, I will have to do this for two, for the next two to three minutes. I will do it again so that you can take a closer look. After spinning the circular disc for a sufficient amount of time, we got the result. As you can see, the, the centrifugal force pushed the heavier particles, which is the chalk powder, at the bottom and kept the lighter light water at the top. We can achieve the same result by using a basic process called sedimentation. But as sedimentation takes longer time compared to centrifugation, where we may use the process of centrifugation. In real life, centrifugation is used in the separation of blood plasma from blood and from and skim milk from whole milk. Uh, apart from using for sedimentation, centrifugation is also used for other purposes as well. For example, in a modern washing machine, water particles are separated from wet clothes to make them dry. I hope you like this experiment. Thank you. I am Arjun Chatterjee of Class 8C. And this is Vik Pandey Gaudhikari of Class 8C. In this year's science exhibition, on behalf of the chemistry section, we will be discussing the topic of crystallization. In this topic, we will be demonstrating an experiment to form DIY crystals at home and also outline some of their benefits in our daily life. Now, what is exactly crystallization? Crystallization can be defined as the process in which a solution containing more solute than it can hold at room temperature is heated in order to evaporate the solution. When very little solvent is left, the solution is cooled down and the solute starts separating out from the solution in the form of crystal. So we got to know that crystallization leads to the formation of solids known as crystals. Now what are they? Crystals are homogeneous solids in which particles, atoms, molecules or ions 
are arranged in a definite pattern due to which they have a definite geometrical shape with a plane surface. Since we now know about crystallization and crystals, let us move forward to observe experiments performed by us to form beautiful colored crystals right at our very own homes. We are going to prepare crystals using potash alum and sugar. The required materials are Potash alum seed crystals, the chemical formula of which is K2SO4.Al2SO4 whole 3.24H2 or sugar seed crystals C12H22O11 drinking water or distilled water spoon glasses strings or pens sticks mortar and pestle a big container to be used for boiling and colored dyes the steps are very simple and are as follows we will take some large crystals and grind them using a mortar and pestle to increase their solubility in water. The given picture depicts the finely ground potash alum and sugar crystals. Then we will boil the distilled or drinking water in a big bowl. After that we have to add potash alum or sugar to the hot water then we will cool the solution. We have to continue this variation of temperature in the solution until it becomes saturated. We will add the ground potash alum or sugar crystals little by little during this whole process and keep stirring. Now it's time to set up the crystals. We have taken different dyes to add to the crystals for making them more colorful, attractive and shiny. Then we need to tie the seed crystals to the strings. Then we will add the colors of the dyes to the respective solutions and pour them in glasses. We will suspend the seed crystals into the glasses with the help of sticks or pens. This is the condition of the solution after 7 hours. And after 7 hours, we have the crystals ready. Now, crystals have a number of uses in our daily life. We have used our crystals as jewelry, and paperweights. Another interesting use of crystals is Crystals are used as healing stones by many people. Natural crystals are infused with thousands, sometimes millions of years of earth history, granting people a healing energy that can help boost any mindful practice. Naturally colored pure crystals are valued as gems. Many decorative and spiritual uses are associated with them. Many minerals mined from the earth's crust are crystalline in nature. Quartz crystals, as we all know, are useful in making modern day watches. Crystals are also used sometimes as medicines or as a cosmetic product. Hello everyone, my name is Sujata Kumar and I am from I will be explaining how there is a balance between oxygen and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Over here, you can see two models. One is of the oxygen cycle and the other is of the carbon dioxide cycle. I will start by explaining the oxygen cycle. As most of you probably know, green plants in the atmosphere carry out photosynthesis. They carry out photosynthesis by taking in sunlight from the sun water or moisture from the soil and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to produce oxygen. This oxygen in the atmosphere is then again taken in by living organisms for breathing. Living organisms such as animals, plants and even human beings take in oxygen. As a result, they uh, release carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide is then again taken in by green plants for photosynthesis. Thus, the cycle continues. Now coming over at the carbon dicycle or carbon dioxide cycle. Over here similarly, green plants take in carbon dioxide to produce oxygen. This oxygen is used for plant respiration as well as animal respiration. In the atmosphere, decaying organisms, dead organisms and waste products uh, prepare layers upon layers under water bodies. As a result, fossils and fossil fuels are formed. These fossils and fossil fuels are used for in factories. Auto and factory emissions are released into the atmosphere which may contain carbon dioxide. 
This carbon dioxide is then again used by green plants for photosynthesis. In this way, the, both the cycles continue, making a balance in the atmosphere. Thus, there is a complete balance between oxygen and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Thank you. Hello everyone, my friend Vibhan Dutta and I, Anurag Biswas of class 9D are going to demonstrate how we can make some eco-friendly inks with some household items. To prepare the brown ink, I have used some coffee powder and to make the yellow ink, I have taken some turmeric powder and some gram flour. To sieve the entire mixture, I have taken two things. One is a regular sieve and the other is a fine poured cloth. And to make the entire mixture, I have taken regular water. First, I will prepare the browning. To prepare the browning, I will mix the water with the coffee powder. As we can see, there are small granules left in the mixture. To avoid these granules, we will sieve this mixture. To make this ink a little darker, we are going to mix this with some shaving alum, which I have here. The resultant mixture will look like this. Next, I am going to prepare the yellow ink. First, I am going to mix the gram flour with the turmeric powder. We need to make sure that the turmeric powder and the gram flour are mixed well to have an even consistency. The mixture is almost ready. I will now add water to make the yellow ink. Here we can see that we have made our yellow ink but it has some small granules. To separate them we will sieve this mixture and let it rest for almost 2 hours and our ink will be ready. We can also try preparing some intermediate colors. For example, here I have prepared the green ink by mixing the turmeric and the gram flour mixture with some of the blue ink. As we can see, it takes up a green color. Now, to make this a little greener, we can add some of the turmeric powder mixture and then we have to leave it to rest for almost 2 hours. Now, after sieving, the green ink looks like this. As we can see, we have produced these beautiful colored inks from natural ingredients. All of these inks need to rest for at least 2 hours before they can be finally used in our artwork. The ingredients that are used in making the inks are as follows. First one is a blue powder made from the dried petals of blue flowers like Nil Conto. And this is the beetroot which I will use for making the deep pink or red ink. This is the water which I will use as a solvent for making the inks. This is the cloth which I will use for sieving. And this is the isopropyl alcohol which I will use later for preserving the inks. Blue ink. I will add some water and mix it. And it's ready. And now for the breading, we will take the beetroot, cut it into pieces of smaller than 1 inch and boil it in a bowl, metal bowl for some time with alum if possible or with simple table salt. And the outcome will be like this after sieving. And finally, these are the inks we have prepared. Now we can sieve them and turn them more finer. Uh, because if we use them directly, it will become granular and it will be difficult to draw with it. Now these are the final products after sieving. 
I will add a few drops of isopropyl alcohol after they have mixed well enough and they are ready to be mixed with isopropyl alcohol. Thank you. And we will be representing a project which is an eco-friendly battery which if used can change the lives of many people living in remote villages. We created a salt water battery powered village model. If this is used in large scale, it can revolutionize the electrical industry and make it more eco-friendly uh, eco and less dependent on non-renewable fossil fuels. The equipments required for the salt water battery are the lights, salt, glasses, water, scissors, wires, copper plates and zinc plates. So now we will be making the battery with these equipment. Basically in this model we put a zinc plate and copper plate opposite to each other while being connected to another container with a copper wire. The containers are filled with salt water and the loose ends are connected to the bulb. The uh, light bulbs are connected to the copper and uh, to the loose ends by the wire. Electricity is generated in the containers and when the switch is flickered the bulbs turn on illuminating the village model. A conductor through which electricity enters or leaves an object, substance or region is called electrodes. Electrolyte is the umbre umbrella term for particles that carry a positive or negative electric charge. This battery uses salt water as the electrolyte and zinc and copper as the electrodes. On dipping two pair of these electrodes in brine solution, a current flows which is sufficient to power this light. In salt water batteries, a liquid solution of salt water is used to capture, store and eventually discharge energy. Whereas a traditional lithium ion battery uses the element lithium as its primary ingredient for conducting electricity. A salt water battery uses sodium, the same element found in table salt.